CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. The name is important because styles cascade or trickle down both through the structure of the web page and through the style definitions. Having a good understanding of the cascade and a principle called specificity is essential to maintaining your sanity when trying to fathom out why a style rule doesn't work as expected. Dreamweaver's CSS Styles panel can help you greatly in this respect. But first, let's recap how the cascade works. There are three sources of styles. The browser, the web designer, that's you, and the user. Each successive one takes precedence over the other, so you as the web designer can override the browser's default rules. But the user can also override yours. It doesn't happen very often, but it can, so you need to be aware of it. Inheritance is also extremely important in CSS. Text properties and list styles are inherited, but most other properties, such as margins, padding and background, are not. Inherited properties build on top of each other. For example, there's no need to specify the font family in every style rule if it's already been defined for an element higher up the document structure. But you can override inherited properties in more specific rules, for example, to apply a different font family to page headings. But what happens when two rules conflict with each other? The general principle is that if both styles have equal weight, the style that comes lower down in the style sheet takes precedence. But the problem is that not all selectors are equal, and that's where the principle of specificity comes in. The official way of calculating specificity uses four numbers separated by commas. To work out a style rule specificity, you add up the values of each part of the selector in each comma-separated group. These examples should make it a little bit clearer. In the first one, there's an ID selector and a type or tag selector. So the ID gets a value of 1 in the second group, and the P gets a value of 1 in the fourth group. The second one is a descendant selector with two type selectors, so that gets a value of 2 in the fourth comma group. And the final one, you've got an ID and two type selectors, so you get 1 in the second comma group and 2 in the fourth comma group. If your head's hurting at this stage, I don't blame you. The official way seems to be overly complicated, and although it is the official way, most web designers ignore the commas and treat the values like this. Inline styles get a value of a thousand, so they always take precedence. IDs are treated as having a value of a hundred. Classes, pseudo classes, and attribute selectors have a value of ten, and type selectors and pseudo elements come at the bottom of the heap with a lowly value of one. So taking the examples again, the first one has a value of 101, the second one has a value of 2, and the third one has a value of 102. So if you're trying to style paragraphs inside a block quote, and it doesn't work, it could be because the paragraphs are inside an element with the ID sidebar, so you would need to use the last one to override the second. Let's see that in practice. In this page here, I've got a block quote with a paragraph inside it. And in the styles, I've created a style rule which is block quote P, font style normal. But as you can see, the font in the block quote is actually italic. And that's confirmed by the CSS styles panel which tells me that the properties for my current selection are determined by sidebar P and the font style is italic. If we look here in the middle section, which shows us the cascade, you can see the block quote P is listed here. Let me just select that, and there's a line through font style. That indicates that it's being overridden. And if you mouse your cursor over there, you can see a tooltip which tells you that font style does not apply to the selection because it's been overridden. Tooltips in the middle section also tell you the specificity. You can see the specificity of sidebar P is 101, whereas of block quote P, it's just two. 
So to solve the problem, we need to create a selector that is going to overrule block quote P. So we need to add the ID selector in front of it. If I now refresh design view, you can see that what has happened is that this has now taken precedence because it has higher specificity. There's one final technique for overriding rules with greater specificity, and that's to add an exclamation mark followed by the keyword important after the style definition. This is not recommended. It's inefficient because you need to add it to every property in a rule. You can't apply it to an entire rule block. It's far better to master the rules of specificity, and the Dreamweaver CSS Styles panel can help you greatly in this regard.